Hello, welcome to another Siler Instrument Quick Tip. I'm Holly Urbain with Siler Instrument Wisconsin. In version 2020 of Trimble Axis, they released a real game-changing tool that I actually uh, missed in the release notes, so I hope this helps. We're out there with our R10s, our R8s, whatever receiver we have, and we're tracking a whole bunch of constellations. In this example, I've got like 14 satellites, right? Well, we all know that we need to build checks into measurements when we're taking a GNSS measurement. The ways that we do that, here's just a few examples, right? We'll remeasure a point in a different constellation. So we'll shoot a point in the morning, come back at least 30 minutes later when the constellation has changed, and shoot it again with the same name. Compare the two points. If they check, that means that we have a good independent check that those points are good. Another thing that's critical is initialization. What initialization is, every time you start a survey, each one of the satellites that's being tracked, the receiver calculates a distance to each one of those satellites. If it can repeat that distance, you'll hear the voice say initialization has been gained on the older receivers, and you get a check mark on the newer receivers. What initialization is, is it, it calculates the distance to each of those satellites in a consistent way, so it can get a re repetitive measurement to each of the satellites. So, what we do is we typically measure a point for three minutes. It takes at least two minutes to ensure that an, an initialization was good. A third thing we do might do is to break initialization, walk away from the point, regain initialization, and then remeasure the point again. And I always say reinitialize away from the point. There's something called multipath. I love this old slide from the, the Trimble card deck. But say we're out there with our receiver, right? We got our perfect reception. Well, not that it happens very often because the receivers are smart, but the satellite signal can bounce off of something before it comes to the receiver. So you don't want to set up your rover on a section corner, let it initialize while it's sitting there, because if you were getting multipath, you'll still be getting that repetitive distance, but it's repeating the wrong distance. That's why I always recommend you're moving the receiver when it's initializing. And when you do break initialization, don't do it while it's sitting level on the point. But here's the game changer. In version 2020, Trimble allowed us to split the current constellation and immediately have two independent constellation checks completely independent of each other. And what I mean by that is when you start a survey, you're going to turn the receiver on and we're tracking all the satellites that the receiver can track. As soon as you start that survey, that satellite number might drop. That's because the base and the rover have to be tracking the same satellites. So if the base station doesn't have all 24, that's why we can't use all 24. Well, if we actually tap on that button, it's going to bring up the satellite screen. And there's two ways to see this satellite screen. There's either the sky plot, which is this one, or the list view. The satellites that are black, you can see G for GPS, that's the American constellation. R, Russian, that's the GLONASS. We have Galileo. So the ones in black are being tracked and used. So you can see right now we're using 17 satellites. The satellites in blue are not being used, so we're not using that RTX satellite. If in the bottom right hand corner I tap the, uh, the button that says the word list, you can see it just goes to a little more tabular list and you can see which satellites are being used. That's that check mark in the far left hand column, whether they're coming up, coming down, and then which of the uh, channels it's using on board each one of those satellites. Well, in version 2020, they introduced a new button, SV set A. That means space vehicle set A. So right now we're tracking 17 satellites. If I hit that space vehicle set A button, it's actually going to automatically calculate the best way to split the current constellation into two equal independent sets of satellites. So the receiver, you don't have to worry about it. The receiver does it for you or the collector does it for you. Access does it. So you hit that, it drops half of the satellites and allows you to take a measurement. Once you hit that uh, SV set A, you'll actually notice a little letter A show up next to the satellite up in the status bar. You'll notice the sky plot on the screen dropped, so we lost eight of those satellites, and the button changed at the bottom of the screen. Now it says SV set B. It's a little confusing, but that button means when you press it, it's going to change from A to set B. So if I hit that button again, right, the status bar shows that letter B and it switches to the remaining eight satellites. So set A is nine, set B is eight, and you guessed it, that button changed again to the word all. So that's how we get them all back again. 
right? So we're tracking 17 satellites. So let me give you a little graphic of this. You're out there, you're tracking satellites, you've got all of them. As soon as I hit that SV set A, the receiver is going to calculate the best spread to split them. You're able to measure a point. You can hit it again, you get set B, and it gives you the remaining satellites. So if you had multipath on the first set, you won't have it on the second set because it's a different set of satellites. We measure that point, and now we have two independent constellations just seconds after each other. Another way to look at this tool is if you go under measure and then RTK initialization. There's a method listed here, so you could jump from all right to B if you wanted to for some reason. You can reset it, say you didn't like the constellation that it picked. So by going into measure the RTK initialization, sometimes with the receivers we have nowadays, there's so many satellites, even just turning the receiver upside down won't break initialization. Well, this is a way to force that initialization. By switching from constellation A to B, it drops initialization and regains it. So again, I recommend moving the receiver while it's trying to reinitialize. What's great about this, again, as part of the metadata in your survey style, you choose what quality control is included with your points. So if you include QC2, it'll tell you how many satellites were used to calculate the point. Typically everybody has their QC1 turned on, so if you expand the QC1 group, you can actually see how many satellites were used and from which of the constellations each was selected. A couple things that I found interesting, the, the group subsets are recalculated every time you switch. So if you go to that uh, Skyplot screen and you hit switch to A, it'll do a recalculation and pick the best constellation. But it doesn't recalculate on the fly. So if you leave it on set A, you jump in the car and you drive a mile down the road, you're still tracking the best set from back where you were. So be careful that you don't forget that that is on. So it limits you to what you're tracking. Same thing with obstructions. If you're using a subset of satellites and you say you walk under a tree and you lose four satellites, you're, you're stuck and you only had eight to start with, you only have four it will not automatically recalculate what are the best split of the two um, A's and B's. Another really handy thing, and I talked about accessing it via the Skyplot screen or accessing it via the uh, RTK initialization screen. When you hit the menu bar, if you hit this little pencil, the favorites are customizable. We have a whole nother video on using favorites and function keys. But if you hit that little pencil, and then you change the radio button over here to the function keys. On the TSC5s, TSC7s, anything that has a keyboard, you've got 12 function keys to select from. So I go into here, I pick which function key I want it to be. And in this case, I'm gonna use F4. I hit the switch satellite group. And now that button, F4, on my keyboard is gonna switch me between all A and B. So now with just one button push, I can switch between having all the satellites or A and B. Thanks for watching.